Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Geography 341. I am Dr. Zach Hildendorf, and in today's lecture, we're going to be talking about fates of insulation. So, if you recall back, insulation is incoming solar radiation. And this video is going to focus on what happens as that incoming solar radiation comes in and strikes different aspects of our planet, moving through the atmosphere, hitting the sun or the Earth's surface, etc. So, what can happen to insulation traveling through the atmosphere? Well, a number of things. It can be absorbed, reflected, scattered, or transmissed, we'll say. Absorption, good absorbers of all wavelengths of visible light typically appear black in color and vice versa. Good reflectors appear white. Reflection is a process whereby light bounces back from an object at about the same angle and intensity at which it was received. Scattering is the general process whereby radiation bounces off in an obstacle in many different directions. And then transmission, about half the insulation that reaches Earth's surface is transmitted through the atmosphere. So the possible fates of insulation. First one we're gonna focus on is absorption. So as we've mentioned before, O2 and O3 basically take up all of the UVC radiation coming into the planet. O3 or ozone encounter or, uh, takes up most of the UVB and a little UVA. And water absorbs nearly all the near infrared radiation coming into our planet. Now water is an interesting, interesting thing across our planet. It makes things very unique for us. Because as it's absorbing, it's changing states, right? Melting or freezing, evaporating or condensing positing or sublimating. Heat energy absorbed from the environment is what leads to the transition from a solid like ice to a liquid like liquid water to a gas like steam. Likewise, lost energy makes a uh, gas go to liquid water to solid water or directly to solid water. It can be reflected. So if we think of this kind of cartoon here, uh, albedo is basically the term we use for the fraction of radiation that is reflected by an object. So a light roof, for example, reflects 35 to 50% of the, radiation, the incoming radiation. Asphalt only reflects five to 10. It absorbs a lot of it because it's much darker in color. Same for the dark roof. Water, highly variable from five to 80% uh, is reflected. Um, thin clouds will reflect 25 to 30% of the incoming solar radiation. Snow, really good because it's white. Uh, so 50 to 90% is reflected. Uh, forests take a lot of that insulation in. Wet plowed fields, because they're darker in color, will also take a lot of that insulation in. Grasses, which we think of are everywhere across our planet, five to 25%, so there's a lot of absorption there. And then things like sandy beaches, for example, 20 to 40%. So they're absorbing a decent amount, but they're reflecting a lot as well. So reflection comes in a few different types. You've got specular reflection, so mirror-like reflection. That says that as you've got rays coming into a surface, at an angle of incidence or a given angle of incidence, they're bouncing back at a complementary angle and intensity, or that's the angle of reflection. Now, what can we think of for something that is really good at reflecting uh, or a really reflective surface? How about a puddle of water or a uh, sheet of ice or something like this? In Greenland or the Arctic uh, or the Antarctic, so a massive ice and snow field. These are where we're seeing the best reflective ca uh, capacity within natural surfaces within our planet. Diffuse reflection is a little bit different. Diffuse reflection, uh, you have a rough reflective surface and as that those rays are coming in because 
that surface is so roughened, you get this kind of hodgepodge of angles of incidence and reflection here. So here's our kind of just two diagrams showing specular reflection on the left and diffuse reflection on the right. So in specular reflection, it's almost a one-to-one. -one. What comes in is what's reflecting out. When it comes to diffuse reflection, there are so many different little nuances to the surface that they're actually diffusing the energy at a much, uh, I guess, greater varying direction. Think of the tops of clouds, for example. That is not a flat mirror-like surface, is it? So you see all the different aspects and angles. That's what's bouncing things back and diffusing that energy. When you consider this is a good picture of Earth, look at all that cloud cover across our surface. So that is leading to a lot of diffuse reflection. Scattering is the next one. So rays of insulation interact with particles, molecules, or particulates and break up into many rays of energy and sun or of light of typically the same wavelength but a lower amplitude going off in a, a variety of different directions so with scattering we've got two two primary types let's see in a second here two primary types of uh, scattering that we're going to talk about we've got raleigh scat sorry powerpoint being weird raleigh scattering is scattering by gas molecules here. So this is wavelength dependent scattering. Only particles with diameters uh, less than or equal to 0.1 in the electromagnetic wavelength. Shorter wavelengths are scattered more effectively than longer wavelengths. So this is an example of what Raleigh scattering looks like here. Um, and you know, obviously the arrows are directional vectors. So if you look at wavelengths by light, uh, the shorter wavelengths like violet uh, are about 400 nanometers. Red is about 665 nanometers. Um, so let's keep that in mind. Or really let's look at blue, so 470 nanometers compared to red, 665 nanometers. This is an example of Raleigh scattering. So blue is a shorter wavelength. It is striking more of those particles and being scattered by more of those particles and molecules in the atmosphere than red light is. Why does this matter? Well, I hope you like blue skies because that's why we have them. Blue light is being scattered more uh, during the day, especially when the sun is overhead by molecules within the air. This is where that Raleigh scattering comes from. What we perceive as blue, the sky, or our blue sky, is really the scattering of that blue wavelength coming in, and that's what we see. So you can thank the Raleigh effect for blue skies, and I just have to include this gif. I love the movie White Christmas during the holiday season. So yeah, you're subject to it now. So, for example, let's look at this beautiful picture here uh, from a morning in the deer stand a number of years ago, looking almost due east from my tree stand. So notice that little uh, hook that I'm kind of circling in the top right corner of the picture here. So this is during, I think, mid-morning, I think is when this was, mid-morning, early afternoon. Now, when there is significantly more atmosphere for that light to travel through. You are subjecting those rays of light to more and more opportunities uh, for reflection. So at a certain point, the blue has been reflected out for the most part, or scattered out for the most part. And what you see and perceive is colors that are longer, colors that are left, the reds, for example. So here we can see that in this is very early morning where the sun is traveling or the rays of the sun are traveling through much, much uh, longer portion of the atmosphere uh, than if the sun was directly overhead. You can see that little hook highlighted again. 
that's when we see these beautiful colors like these yellows and oranges and reds because that's the light that is being scattered at this point. Next one, uh, my or me, my scattering, scattering by aerosols. So this is somewhat wavelength dependent, but not always. And particles with diameters roughly the same as and larger than electromagnetic wavelength is where this occurs. You can see there the diagrams. So this we see most regularly with haze, or uh, you see here and here. Haze is suspension of the air of extremely small dry particles that are invisible to the naked eye and sufficiently numerous to give the air an opalescent appearance. So in this, these photos here, uh, haze progressively obscures the details uh, of successive hill slopes that you're looking at further and further in that bottom right image. The haze was caused by general pollution and smoke from small bonfires that had stagnated over several days in this area of Nepal. Dust haze, the picture in the top left there, is suspension in the air of dust or small sand particles raised from the ground prior to the time of observation by a dust storm or sandstorm that occurred at or near the location or maybe far away from it. But these are examples where it's actually the particles in the air that are scattering the light coming in. And that's how you're seeing these, these different effects on what you can see in front of you. Same thing here, uh, you kind of see this uh, almost haze across the surface of the road here, um, kind of basically muting the details, if you will, further into the photo here. The next one, the third one, non-selective scattering, gets its name for the fact that all wavelengths are scattered about equally. The scattering causes fog and clouds to appear white to our eyes because blue, green, and red light are all scattered in approximately equal quantities. Now, if you think of blue plus green plus red, that gives us white light. So this is our scattering by water droplets and crystals. Not wavelength dependent at all. Everything's scattered equally. What gives us these beautiful billowy white clouds or why they look white to us. You can see here, white light is scattered in all directions. Some light penetrates to the cloud base. And then direct transmission just means that it's coming down through the atmosphere and transmitted to us. You can see here. Um, obviously, if things get in the way, like a tree, you have shading, but it's still getting through to the surface. So in this one, we talked about absorption, reflection, scattering, and transmission. Uh, we're going to continue on. We've got a couple more to go here um, in the energy and heat lectures. Uh, but I will see you in the next video.